As former President Donald Trump spends time on the campaign trail and in the courtroom, he's having an impact on Capitol Hill as well. Speaker Mike Johnson is meeting with the presumptive Republican nominee at Mar-a-Lago in Florida tomorrow. Conservative lawmakers amid all of this have helped block a national security surveillance bill that came yesterday after Trump came out against it. All of this happening as Johnson faces the real threat of getting ousted, just like his predecessor. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins us now from Capitol Hill. Nicole, thank you for being here and sharing your reporting. What do you believe as a reporter, what's your assessment about Johnson's meeting with Trump tomorrow and what it could mean, especially for House Republicans and the legislative agenda? Well, obviously, this comes at a very significant and potentially perilous time for the speaker. It comes as no surprise that uh, Speaker Johnson has maintained a close relationship with the former president. So his visit is not necessarily unusual in that sense, but is more unusual in the sense of timing, because as you just alluded to, uh, there is this threat of a motion to vacate, potentially to oust him as speaker by another close Trump ally, Marjorie Taylor Greene of Florida. So so while we do know this announcement uh, with the former president and the speaker is expected to focus on election integrity issues, at the same time, the optics of the two men standing together politically could be an attempt also to try to send a signal to fellow Republicans to uh, try to rally around the speaker or to present a united front on the part of the former president and the speaker. Yes, this event on Friday is being billed as a so-called election integrity event. Trump, of course, continues to deny that President Biden fairly won the 2020 election and falsely claimed that the election was stolen from him. Meanwhile, Trump continues to exert influence over House Republicans. Nicole, what have you learned about how Trump's opposition to an extension of FISA, the surveillance legislation, has influenced House Republicans? Well, we did see this week uh, some 19 House Republicans uh, block that bill, which uh, would have reauthorized and technically it was the rule that would have allowed uh, the bill to be taken up for consideration, but uh, essentially blocking this bill uh, that would uh, reauthorize the government's warrantless surveillance program. But that being said, it is not stopping the speaker and Republican leadership from trying to move forward, even as the former president has suggested killing the bill. Uh, we are learning late this evening that it's possible uh, that the House will try to make another attempt to try to bring this FISA legislation up, uh, potentially looking at uh, shortening the reauthorization period from five years to two years, potentially. Uh, there has been talk of another rules meeting uh, in the near future and that the House could, again, try to bring this up before the end of the week. The Japanese prime minister in Washington, let's listen for a moment about what he had to say. As we meet here today, I detect an undercurrent of self-doubt among some Americans about what your role in the world should be. With respect to the Japanese prime minister, as a reporter, I would not characterize it as an undercurrent of self-doubt. There's, in fact, a raging debate uh, between both of the parties about United States and its role in the world. One of the key issues on that front, Nicole, as you know well, is whether to have an extension of funding for Ukraine in its war against Russia. Where does that stand right now in Congress? Yeah, well, I think that was perhaps what was most striking about the prime minister's uh, comments to Congress earlier today. Certainly while he did talk at length about the strong alliance between the United States and Japan, he did spend a lot of time talking about some of those global threats around the world, not only in the Indo-Pacific, but also with respect to Ukraine, talking about how Japan has supported Ukraine in its war against Russia and also questioning what might happen if the U.S. doesn't support Ukraine. So, again, this all coming at a very critical time as Speaker Johnson also has to make a decision about whether or not to bring that supplemental legislation to the floor. A lot of decisions for Speaker Johnson as he heads to Florida. Nicole Killian, thank you. You bet.